Good evening. Thank you for joining us on the EBS TV Comprehensive News. I am Gloria Osuma. Governor Godwin Obaseki has expressed displeasure over the degrading and excruciating living conditions of citizens of the country arising from wrong decision making and policies of the federal government, pledging to address some of the demands by protesters in Benin City. Governor Obaseki was speaking while addressing Ed Band and bad governance protesters at King Square in Benin City. Moses Agboma has more. Protesters in Benin City converged at King Square, popularly known as the Oba Owarane Square in Benin City, where they joined other citizens in what was hashtagged and bad governance in Nigeria, amongst other calls which the citizens are yearning for. Mr. Obaseki pledged to channel their grievances to President Bola Tinubu while promising to disband the various trade unions. The challenges encountered from motorists by motor park touts, among other demands, which is believed to be making life difficult for Nigerians in the state. When I not say, as to my governor, I love Una. Una not worry. One of the protester and popular comedian Francis Agoda, also known as Agodai, admonished protesters to be law-abiding while challenging their grievances towards the federal government. But he can send our message to federal government so that if for him, as a governor of the state, make it still understand. So people in this state, they are not also happy. Meanwhile, at government house in Benin City, the governor also addressed fractions of protesters in like manner. We don't want to make people to go around the streets because people feel pretend. So they be protesters, they go start to burn something. Okay. Now I want, no. I want not burn anything. No. It is expected that the assurance by the governor will quell the demonstration while awaits likely measures that will assuage their grievances. Meuzis Agboma, EBS News. Edo State Government says it does not have a warehouse in the Urara axis of Poba Hill in Benin City. State Commissioner for Communication and Orientation, Chris Nehihai, in a statement said the clarification became necessary in view of the information about the looting of bags of rice from unidentified truck and private residences in the Urara axis of the Edo State Capital in the wake of the hashtag and bad governance protest, which is the video being circulated. He said government supports the vulnerable with relief materials through religious organizations, particularly the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, and the Edo State Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board, stressing that government does not keep any relief material by itself, but reaches out to the people through these channels. Edo State Orientation and Communication Commissioner traced the spreading of the malicious contents to the tactics of the All Progressives Congress APC to score cheaper political points as well as a condemnable action intended to cause chaos in the state. Commissioner Nehikai enjoined the public to disregard the ill-motivated video and again urged protesters not to attack or destroy the property of others in the state. And the Christian Association of Nigeria, Canada State Chapter, has denied the notion that the state government rebuts the palliative provided by the federal government for the state to cushion the effect of the economic hardship on a dual residence, stating that both phases of the state feeding program were funded by Governor Godwin Obaseki. Chairman of the association and chairman of the state feeding program, Apostle Rekbono Omoike, disclosed this to journalists during a briefing at the Catholic Chancery in Benin City. Moses Agboma brings details. Yeah. <sighs> 
Briefing journalists at the Catholic Chancery at Airport Road in Benin City about a recent video trending on social media at Urura in Oonde local government area of the state alleging that Edo state government rebugged the rights provided by the federal government as palliative to residents in the state. Chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, Edo State Chapter, explained how the first and second phase of the program was funded by the governor and how they were being distributed by the committee responsible. He said the governor only provided the means for the funding and the Khan committee was solely in charge of the distribution. There is the very important issue to correct a wrong notion that is circulating that the rice being distributed by the state government is rice supplied by federal government and rebarred and is being circulated by the state government. This is misinformation. It's a very wrong notion and it needs to be corrected. Much earlier this year, uh, the go governor himself met with the Christian Association of Nigeria in this room at the Chancellor Office of the Catholic Church and told us that uh, there is the need to reach out to the hungry. He discussed with us that uh, he wants to reach the poor with food palliatives and uh, discussed at length with Christian leaders who were here. In May this year, we flagged it off in the Baptist Convention ground. Mm. 60,000 bags of 10 kg rice was distributed. He released another batch of 1 billion to repeat the exercise, to replicate it so that they can reach the poor. Senior Special Assistant to the Governor on Religious Matters, Osagi Oironse, added that on the verge of distribution, the vehicle was attacked and hijacked by hoodlums, alleging it was the handiwork of oppositions and partly the mistake by approved vendor who could not retrieve the goods on the damaged vehicle. It was an attempt for them to save the rice. Incidentally, they had to contact one of our rice vendors. Like Mr. Chairman was saying, we interviewed different local rice vendors from Edo State and we source this rice from the local market. So one of the rice vendors who have one of our, our places, our house where she usually do the rebagging because they have to buy a 50 kg bag from the market and rebag into our 10 kg. The rice vendor and say, please ma, this truck just arrived because of vehicular breakdown last night, 8 a.m. I will not allow them to distribute rice while protest is ongoing. Please let them keep it at your place you usually do rebugging there of the rice you supply to us having the approved as one of our vendors so it took time for me to convince her and say please so in an attempt for us to take that rice for safekeeping that was when the product was attacked by hoodlums Moses Agboma, EBS News as the nationwide protests with the hashtag end bad governance enters day two, protesters in Benin City insist on continuing with the exercise until the federal government meets their demands, primarily geared to alleviate the excruciating hunger in Nigeria. Benedito Tokati reports. <laughs> Those were the voices of some of the angry Nigerians who defied the early morning rains in Benin City to hit major streets in the Edo State capital in continuation of the nationwide protest with the hashtag and bad governance. The protesters who mainly occupied the popular Oba of Arame Square in their thousands spoke through some of their representatives. When the youth are hungry, it's a problem. And when the mother said that they are hungry, it's a problem. Right today, we, don't, we can't buy barrier again. Okay? We can't buy rice. And we can't buy beans. Those are the common food within the covenants. And the material of the state of America will be abolished. Even though you bring a marriage, so you can some of the protesters were also at the corporate headquarters of Edo Broadcasting Service at Aduawa. Vehicular and human movement were hampered across the city as the protesters took over the major roads. One of the protesters, Comrade Ayo Wisdom, said Nigerians have been pushed to the wall, occasioned by the obvious insensitivity on the part of the federal government, as evident in the unbearable high cost of living, which must be addressed. We want the president to reverse to the payment of subsidy, so that it was as a result of the removal of subsidy that we led to the end of food items in the market. He the said that the ordinary man these women who were among the protesters who simply gave their names as Gladys and Tina also comment. 
and the wife of our dad give us 30,000. They died to sit it before us. This time now, you go 100,000. You don't go leave. You don't leave. You don't leave. You don't leave. If you get anything where we do, and make it forgive us. Make it that the kids come down for us so that we can get back. Because it's 10,000 naira for nine naira. You don't want 500. You told me we don't be there. No, everything don't go right. We don't care. We are not doing it for us. We are begging, I'm a man. I'm begging. I'm it is the hope of all Nigerians that the federal government should promptly meet the demands of the protesting Nigerians before the situation deteriorates. Benedict Okati, EBS News. The All Progressives Congress governorship candidate Monde Okbebulu and other chieftains of the party made efforts to stop the ongoing hardship protests from holding in Edo State. A statement by a concerned citizen, Matthew Ehigato, in Benin City, remarked that the brave and valiant people of Edo State trooped to the Ring Road in Benin City to express their rejection of the hunger, high cost of living, bad governance, and maladministration of the APC led federal government. To fuel hikes. APC renewed Shege and gathered peacefully to protest at Ring Road in Benin City. Matthew Higato also alleged that the APC chairman Jared Tenebe was caught lying on video that the protest did not hold all in a shameful bid to justify the money he received from President Bola Tenebu to thwart the protest in Benin. He also claimed that in the days preceding, the APC candidate and party chairman had received 350 million naira from Asorok sources to dissuade Edo citizens from coming out to legitimately express their grievances about the worsening economic situation in the country caused by the APC. And the Sultan of Sokoto and President of Nigeria Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs al Haji Muhammad Saad Abubakar III and the President of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, and Bishop Daniel Loko, this Friday called on the Nigerian youth to put an end to the ongoing nationwide protest. The two religious leaders made a call in a statement they jointly signed with the Executive Secretary of NIREC, Professor Cornelius Afebu Omohua. The Sultan appealed to protesters and the conveners of the protest to shift their sword and come to the dialogue table. They urged the government to expedite action towards meeting the yearnings and needs of the citizens. Still on the protest, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar has described the ongoing nationwide protest against economic hardship in the country as significant. This is even as he admonished the Nigerian government to head to hear the voices of the people and come down from their high horses, insisting it is time to demonstrate a sincere commitment to addressing the demands of the protesters. Atiku said the protest has opened a vital channel for the public to express disapproval of government policies. In a post on his ex-handle this Friday, the People's Democratic Party PDP presidential candidate in the last general election said, Protesters have conducted themselves with admirable peace and must be commended for their restraint and dedication. He also asked the security agencies to identify and isolate the minority elements who are resorting to violence and looting. Edo State Commissioner of Police Funsho Adegboye says the state has been relatively peaceful in the wake of the ongoing nationwide hardship protests. CP Adigboye was speaking this Friday in Benin City while addressing journalists on the day two of the protest. Crime correspondent Festus Alenke has details. CP Foncho Adigboye said Edo State protesters have been very peaceful and orderly 
and appealed to them to sustain the temple. He emphasized that all protests in Benin City can only be accommodated in the King's Square to prevent hoodlums from turning the exercise to violence. He stated that any person or group of persons that assemble outside the King's Square in Benin City for any form of protest will be treated as a criminal. He said the police got a credible information that some persons are using the opportunity to extort and carry out some heinous criminal activities, including the blockade of some major roads and streets in Benin City. He described the action as unlawful and an attempt to push the police to use maximum force. We discovered that some people are regrouping in other places where they are blocking the roads. Uh, people and they are extorting. This is not out of protest. We should not spoil the good work that we have started on this protest. Anybody seen blocking the road in other places apart from the King Square or the Ring Road, such people will be seen as looters or hoodlums. And we don't want to start uh, using maximum force. CP Funcho Adebo stated that the police command has deployed heavily armed men to all nooks and crannies of the state. He said why a section of the police strike forces are keeping watch on the protesters, others are still on their day-to-day -day crime prevention control. We have been dialoguing with them, we are telling them please don't add to people's wounds. Our officers are moving around, we don't want to use unnecessary force. But when where your own rights stops, that is where other people's rights starts. He said while a section of the police strike forces are keeping watch on the protesters, others are still on their day-to-day -day crime prevention patrol. For now, no injury, no law, no destruction of government property. Everything is going on and we are happy about it and we want us to please keep up with this tempo. However, most parts of Benin City recorded low traffic as residents were observed to be indoor to avoid the unexpected. Government and private offices, shops and other economic activities in Edo State have been on its lowest head since 1st of August 2024. In Benin, Festus Alenke, EBS News. The Speaker House of Representatives, Tadjudin Abbas, says Nigerian youths have spoken loudly and the government has heard. Abbas noted that President Bola Tinubu and the administration listens, understands and is committed to transforming Nigeria into a country that works for young people. He was speaking at a town hall meeting with Nigerian youth groups in Abuja. Hereta Momodo reports from Abuja. Setting the tone of discussions, Speaker Abbas said the purpose of the meeting is not to stifle the youth's constitutional rights of free expression. He stressed that it is aimed at creating a formal avenue of regular engagement of ensuring that their voices are heard at the highest levels of government. Data from the House also shows that improving national security emerged as the second highest priority, with many emotions dedicated to security. Again, your voice matters and we are listening. Addressing governance issues such as the cost of governance, electoral reforms, and constitutional and judicial reforms is also a priority. Additionally, in a demonstration of our empathy with citizens facing economic challenges, members of this House of Representatives have collectively decided to forego 50% of our salaries for the next six months. The town hall meeting features submissions by cabinet ministers, prominent youth and stakeholders who outlined steps being taken to address present challenges and call for calm and understanding. For us in health, we focus on the poorest and most vulnerable, our mothers. Everyone here has a mother. Let them survive. That's why we're expanding primary health care. More than 8,800 of them reached. More than 2 million Nigerians in the last one year access healthcare through the Vulnerable Groups Fund, in addition to the others who are insured. We're investing in upgrading cancer infrastructure across the country, six geopolitical zones. We'll soon be groundbreaking of 10 major hospital infrastructure. 
Just this week, he approved graciously, Mr. President, 7,887 dialysis sets for those who are suffering from kidney disease. National Talent Export Program, we've been able to sign agreements with a number of countries and we've started processing the first batch. We have agreements, the DG will also come and explain to you, agreements with QS, with UAE, with Jordan, and now with America. We were here when we signed also a BPO, the Business Process Outsourcing uh, Program, with a company that came from the United States. I just came back from the United States yesterday, where we signed a major agreement to facilitate trade and investment between Nigeria and the United States. We will see more investment and more job creation opportunities that will come with that. There is a pressing need to invest in education, equipping the youth with the skills and knowledge that they need to thrive in the 21st century. There must be also an enabling environment for business to flourish, thereby generating employment opportunities. At the panel discussion, the youth bared their minds on their needs and requests from the government. Henrietta Momodu, EBS News. You're watching the ABS TV comprehensive news. You can now watch Edo Broadcasting Service on Star Times Channel 113 and Go TV Channel 141. For more on our news, follow EBS Reloaded on Facebook and subscribe to Edo Broadcasting Service on YouTube. You can now report motorists driving against traffic one way by recording a video of the vehicle and sending the recorded video to the WhatsApp number 0813 -203 -08. Four, six. Still to come, towards curbing the tide of corrupt practices in government agencies, House of Representatives queries Ministry of Finance incorporated for unauthorized expenditure. Details of this and other reports after this break. Please stay with us. <laughs> Eight years in mind. The Ugo family of Uronigbe, Oromo local government area, remembers today as always a beautiful, loving, kind hearted mother, grandmother, that Mrs. Margaret Ugo Ni Jesuobo, who transited into glory. It's exactly eight years today. Ie Nogye, Ie Nye, we remember you every day because we missed your loving counsel. You were a good mother to us and to every child who came around you. Ie Battalion, your legacies of hard work, steadfastness, and generosity is the bedrock of our lives and has helped spur us to greater heights. Iye Nogye, we miss you so much, but we are assured you are resting soundly in the bosom of God Almighty. Sleep on our beautiful Iye Nogye, Iye Battalion, until the resurrection morning when we shall meet to part no more. Fully remembered by your children, sign the children. <laughs> Members of the Palasha Garden of Ogefa of Benin Kingdom and late Madam Rose Ogefa Ni Oloki cordially invite you to their late mother's remembrance, Thanksgiving and birthday party of Chief Osadola Ogefa, the Enobori of Egba, Chief Executive Officer, Grafa Conglomerate, Chairman, Nigerian Football Supporters Club and Bender Insurance Football Supporters Club. Date, Tuesday, 13th August, 2024. Time, 1 p.m. Venue, 21 Navy Street of Mission Road, Benin City. You are the best father anyone could ever ask for. Daddy, you will always be our favorite superhero. We love you today, tomorrow, and forever. We can't wait to celebrate your special day with you. Happy birthday, Daddy. Sign Prince Ike Ogefa Usadolo. Patience Ogefa Usadolo. David Elliot Ogefa Usadolo and grandchildren.
do nevus of money on ye. Wagaro was any money any be. I swear it would dalo kill Saudion of you gay. He had a setting dollar do ye sayo. Nedo him when I did big game. PDP allow dalo o three dollar. Who are those trying to set a do state ablaze? The identities of some of the culprits have been established. These are a few of them. We call upon the Nigerian police to do their job and ensure that these culprits are brought to justice and made to face the full wrath of the law. There is ample video evidence in the public domain demonstrating the culpability of these non-state actors who wreaked havoc on innocent citizens in Benin City on Thursday, July 18, 2024. We cannot be looking for the culprits when we have already caught some of them in the act. Therefore, we urge the Nigerian police to immediately arrest these individuals for a thorough investigation into the incidents that led to the breakdown of law and order in our dear states. No, no go front. No go for no front. Now what you see today? If we not be men we sabi We not go vote any other person We not go vote If we not be PDP We not go vote any other party We not go vote For whatever I go If I swear they dare we go prosper I like go down we not they go back I swear you go down low for governor Aye 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 For whatever For PDP, oh yes, PDP, oh yes, Voti go dalo, oh yes, Igo do oh yes, Man we sabi, oh yes, Integrity, oh yes, Igo better mama, oh yes, Better papa, oh yes, Go better picking, oh yes, Better edo, oh yes, Ay 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 ay. For whatever I do, if I swear they dare we go prosper, I like go dalo, we know they go bad. Vote as Sway Godalo for governor at 2024. Igo no if you don't don't PDP Odalo oh, Dalo In the Edo 2024 governorship election, we have two major contenders. Let us hear from both candidates so we can decide who is fit to be our next governor. The Honorable Minister, His Excellency, sir. APC! We are APC. Restore our educational system back. To restore the security system back. To restore our infrastructure back. Edok Jaga Jaga. Yahoo Yahoo people. I do for before this gov this governor coming to office. What are we owing? They are Yahoo people. Contrast because our profile is rising. Every day, they want to use the sound of a gun to silence us. Is it going to be possible? Because we are bringing practical governance into this state. Our money, our business are taken away from this state.
So we all agree that we need a new Edo. A goal that will be a truly state of our dream. That was Monday of Bewolo of the APC. Now listen to Dr. Aswe Igodalo of the PDP. I see a picture where Edo State will pull up the rest of Nigeria if Edo State realizes its full potential. And because of the work and the labors of our heroes past in Edo State, we have laid a foundation. Now is takeoff time. If we don't have somebody that sees how we can take off, we will stay where we are. There's gold in Edo State. There's lithium. There's no kind of resource we don't have. Those resources are things we humans will use for our betterment. The path I see for Edo State is very clear. You have heard from both candidates. The difference is clear. Reject incompetence. Vote for competence. Vote for excellence. Vote for Dr. Aswe Igodalo. Vote PDP. Thank you for staying on. Welcome to the second half of the bulletin. The House of Representatives has queried the Ministry of Finance Incorporated for unauthorized expenditure. Chairman House Committee on Public Assets, Honorable Ademori Kui, issued the query when the managing director of the agency, Armstrong Katang, appeared before it to give account of his activities. Harriet Amomodu again reports from Abuja. The committee which grilled Takang and members of his team on efforts to shore up the revenue of government expressed disappointment with Mofi for failing to live up to expectations. It berated the agency's reckless expenditure without improving government revenue. The chairman said the agency wasted the committee's time as it did not provide any answer to its questions. Kuye, in his ruling, demanded various documents from the agency on the asset it was managing and gave seven days submission deadline. So far, Mofi has just wasted the time of Nigerians, taxpayers' money, time, today. And we must not allow that to happen again. I was listening to the radio this morning when they were talking of um, the legal disposal of some real estates belonging to NNPC, where you own 50% of the shares. We want to know whether you are the one selling those assets. Is we are a federal government entity that focuses on one, ensuring that the federal government assets are accounted for, they are optimized for the benefit of the federal government, which is different from the federation. The second aspect of it is that every time federal government has to make an investment decision and managing that, they don't need to consult with state governments or the local government, which is typically what you would have in the case of NSI being a federation, uh, federation asset. I sit here and I'm lost. I'm angry because um, this, is a, this, is, this is a government functional institution. We don't function by theories. MD, sir, you spoke so well. You said plenty things. I don't really believe that this thing should be done theoretically. To me, I just heard lectures. You just lectured me. Very good lecture, a lot of education. But I need documents to refer to. I am, I have meant to understand that you were on notice to present your update what you have done so far, what you have achieved so far as an, as an agency. You don't come with verbal things. You don't come and be talking. You give me documents. The ministry had earlier told the panel it had 52 companies in its portfolio with an estimated 18 trillion naira value and over 15,000 employees, making it a major driver of the economy. Henrietta Momodu, EBS News. And that's our bulletin for tonight. Thank you for watching. Good night.